Hey friends, today is December 17th, 2020, therefore we are in Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. A little bit shorter chapter, but we have lots um, packed in, just a, a, a few paragraphs here. Uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he's referencing the Pharisees. In other words, don't be like them. That's what he's more or less telling the disciples here. The Pharisees didn't care for the lesser than or the little ones. And they cared all about status. Again, they thought they were all that and a bag of chips. You know, they didn't want to get their hands dirty. Uh, they didn't want to touch the lepers because that would make them unclean. They didn't want to take care of that beat-up traveler that was laying alongside of the road. Again, they would be deemed unclean, and so they just simply pretended not to see. They had blinders on. And Jesus said, don't be like them. Don't be like those guys. That's not how the kingdom of God works. Jesus wants us to think broader. He's still calling us to think broader. It's not just about our own little bubble. It's not just about our, the mission is not just inside our church walls. My goodness, we're finding that out now during this pandemic when we have to do church really, really different. If we didn't know it before, hopefully we're catching on quickly now. Jesus is calling us to think broader with this message. And we'll get to that just in just a little bit here. Reach farther. Christianity is about family, the family of God. It's broader. Then he, he talks a little bit about sin and being careful not to cause others to fall into sin, to cause others to, to stumble. Um, as United Methodist, we serve grape juice with communion rather than wine, you know, and the confirmation, the, the kids said, well, why do we have grape juice and the Lutheran, Lutherans have wine? Well, it's because John Wesley did not want the sacrament to be a stumbling block for those who had a problem with alcohol. You know, even that little cup of Mogan David could cause somebody to start drinking again if they were, you know, trying to abstain from alcohol. And that maybe that one little cup of Mogan David would want them to have more cups of Mogan David, you know. So that, that's why we use grape juice in the United Methodist Church. If, if somebody is... Um, having trouble with alcohol. You, you don't go take them to the bar. You don't offer them a beer or, or whatever, you know. Don't cause somebody to sin intentionally. We are our brother's keeper. And the others are our keeper. That, that's just how it goes. And my favorite part, well, in, invest in others, basically, is what Jesus is saying. Little ones. Jesus blesses the little ones. We're going to see this again now tomorrow in chapter 18 to kids. Kids matter to Jesus. Um, kids matter in Luke's gospel, just as it's always about the lesser than, um, the unlikely, the little ones. Um, so Jesus blesses the kids. We have a responsibility to take care of the little ones, Jesus says. Amen and amen, amen. You know, this is near and dear to my heart. And then Jesus starts talking about a really, it would be better for you to tie a, a rock around your head and jump into the pond or, or whatever. He said, if you do not take care of these little ones, woe to you. Woe to you, big time. Um, I think of jam, of course. You know, I, I'm missing our littles. I'm missing dancing with our littles and, and hugging them and learning about their day. You know, at least we got to see them once a week and 
you know, they would come running and tell you about their day. And so, you know, or my cat, my cat died, or they bring the prayers of their hearts. And, and I am certainly missing the interaction with them. And so know, you jammers, that you are loved and you are thought of by God and me all the time, especially during, during this. Jesus, this is a new thing, you know, he, his teaching, he, his teaching is different then, which also ticked off the Pharisees. It wasn't inside, well, he, he taught inside the synagogue sometimes, you know, but like the Sermon on the Mount, he's outside talking to everyday people, using everyday object lessons of things that they would relate to birds and treasures and, and lilies and, and stuff. And, you know, like we saw a couple nights ago with the lost things, a coin, a sheep, and a kid. This was something new, different then. Jesus uses everyday tangible things. That's one of the reasons why I like jam, you know? Every everyday thing on, on their level, so people get it. Jesus talks about forgiveness, and, and should we forgive somebody seven, seven times or 70 times seven? If somebody has a repetitive heart, you know, yes, absolutely, you need to for, forgive them. Again, that, that's don't hold people into, into sin. The disciples asked the question, well, it's not really a question. It's a statement. Lord, increase our faith. Because all of this sounds like an awful lot of work. So, you know, it's like, Jesus, wave your magic wand and give us an extra dose of faith Faith here. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't, doesn't work like that. You know, Jesus, is you, you don't have to have a whole bunch of faith. You just have to have a little faith. Faith like a mustard seed. You know, mustard, you only need a little on your hot dog. It's not like ketchup. You, you don't need a whole half gallon of Heinz ketchup. Heinz is big at my house, it, so and it has to be Heinz. So mustard, you, you don't need a whole bunch of it. And Jesus has said, you, you don't need a whole bunch of faith. You A little goes a long way. You can do a lot with a little faith. And so it's like, pass the mustard, God. Please surprise me. Surprise me with the little faith. What, what you can do through this little amount of faith. Jesus talks about faith. With faith comes service. Um, the late, great Rich Mullins had a song uh, about faith is like works. It's like a song you can't sing. Or faith without works is like a song you can't sing. It's about as useless as a screen door on a submarine. The works aren't going to get us into heaven. Works will not get us into heaven. But our, our service is evidence of our faith. So they do go hand in hand. You know, if we're fruitful, if we're fruitful, it's evidence of, of our faith. Then we get a story about the ten lepers. Um, preach this on Thanksgiving. I, I think that the, thank, the please and thank you sermon that uh, I did, um, some of you listened to that. I always like to call it a thank you note from leper number 10. Because there's 10 lepers. We find out that one leper is a Samaritan. Our scene opens, a scene change, on the way to Jerusalem. And what's going to happen in Jerusalem? Jesus is going to be handed over to the religious leaders to be tried and, and beaten and accused and, and um, crucified. But on the third day, he will rise again. Things are heating up, you know, as we're nearing the end here 
already we're nearing the end of Luke's gospel on the way to Jerusalem. This story, it's important to note, takes place between Samaria and Galilee. Samaria, that place where Jesus wasn't supposed to go, those unclean Samaritans. Here again, we find out that one of these lepers is a Samaritan. There's a double dose of uncleanliness here. Uh, the one leper, especially a double dose, a Samaritan and a leper, you know. And, and so the lepers keep their distance because they're lepers. They, they know that Jesus isn't supposed to touch them. But they start hollering, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. In other words, please heal us. Jesus doesn't touch them. He just says, go and show yourselves to the priests. They, they, once they were clean, they had to be examined by the priests so then they could re-enter society. Well, there's ten lepers. Only one leper comes back, and we find out it's the Samaritan. And he falls at Jesus' feet. Thank you, Jesus. He knows that he's just been in, in the presence of the Holy One. This thank you note from leper number 10. Where are the other nine? Then kingdom come. We get this, this segment about kingdom come. The Pharisees ask, when will the kingdom of God come? Well, it's like, <laughs> duh. Well, here's, here's your sign, you know. Jesus has been right there in front of them all along. Um, the kingdom is, is right in front of you. You know, the day is coming when you will long to see the Son of Man. Again, that Lukean phrase, Son of Man. And he calls the Pharisees circling vultures. Minnesota, we call those turkey buzzards. Um, again, it, it's a, a, a call to... Just be ready. I've had more conversations about, do you think we're living in the end times with this pandemic and all of the, the, the things? Um, you know, Jesus doesn't even know the time or the day, but we are called to be ready for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom now and the not quite yet. The, the kingdom of heaven is near you now. It's always been near us. You know, we are just called to simply be ready. Again, um, you can read Jesus' tone, can't you, in this segment? Like, he's, he's frustrated. This, he's on the way to the cross. He doesn't have time to dilly-daddly around. The disciples need to get this, and they're not getting it, and he, he's frustrated with it. He's on the way to the cross. So, you know, sometimes I get frustrated too. Get frustrated with all the stuff on Facebook, with the bashing and, and not being kind, regardless of what polit political party you favor, you know. Um, I, I get frustrated to love our neighbor, to love our neighbor. This message of salvation is urgent. It is urgent. You know, um, and I want to be a herald. I want to be a herald. Not herald in the name. Herald as in mouthpiece for God. Proclaiming this message of salvation is urgent. Committed to the message. And you know what people want? to know from the church they want to know that they matter number one do I matter and they want to know what's going to happen when they die those are the two biggest biggest things they want to know that they are loved and appreciated don't we all want to to matter and what's going to happen when we die I want to be a herald of this this message don't you i hope so well tomorrow chapter 18 
So we'll we'll take it from there. Let me know what you thought about chapter 17. Not um, quite as long, not quite as heavy as we had yesterday, but still heavy. And we're going to find that because Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem. Things are ramping up. So I hope you had a good day today. Um, can't believe the, it's tomorrow's already Friday. So we'll see you tomorrow. Sleep well. Bye for now. Jesus loves you. Here's a picture of the sheepie. Good night, my sheepies.